fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Rider of the Plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. And Silver, and Silver, City was suddenly broken by the din of shouting men and gunfire. Great day. What's the heaven? Come on, eh? Sheriff Dennis sprang from his chair in his office and rushed toward the door with his deputy. From down near the bank. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's heaven? The bank was near us. Yeah, just at closing time. They shot the cashier. All uh, right, calm down a minute. Yeah. Somebody give me the facts. The rest of them is too quiet. There was a mad hombre on a big white horse, Sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. Had an Indian with him right in the paint. Yeah. I saw him as he ran out of the store across the street. Oh, here comes Bank and call us. He can tell us the straight story, Sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff, you'd better get a posse together right away. Get after those out of the Well, as soon as I get a few facts, I'll follow him. Don't worry, Mr. Corliss. You see, case you did. No, but he's badly wounded. I sent to tell her for Dr. Leeds. Did they get away with anything? Plenty. Almost 10,000 in cash. Yeah. I was just about to close the vault for the night. What did they look like? You remember? Well, one was a tall, well built man. The other was an Indian. That's all I know. It all happened so quick. I see. Hank, get all the men you can to form a posse. I'll meet them in front of the jail in 10 minutes. Right, sir. We'll get after those two outlaws while the trail is still hot. From Rock City, two men rode along the trail that headed south. One was tall and well built and rode a white horse. The other looked like an Indian, but close inspection would have shown that the reddish brown color of his face and hands ended at his neck and wrists. Tex Mears was the man on the white horse, and his features, now without a mask, were known to lawmen from border to border as those of a notorious and much feared outlaw killer. His companion, Jake Delroy, wasn't so well known. Tex was saying, <laughs> That's the third time we posed as a lone ranger and got away with it. Yeah. When I met you after my stretch in territorial prison a few months ago, I didn't know how smart you really were, Tex. You told me once you never saw the lone ranger, Jake. But you just heard about him. Yeah. I heard plenty about that hombre while I was doing time. He broke up a gang of mine in Arizona. I got away, but with a bullet in my shoulder. Well, if he's as good as that here, how'd you escape? Well, the gang come to the hideout and tipped us off that him and the Indian were coming. I said I'd go up to the canyon rim and check. I was up there when they rode into the hideout in the canyon, so I lit out. One of my own men saw me and shot at me. 
I kept going. It wasn't a bad wound, and I managed to get away. Well, you were lucky. Yeah. Then I heard the masked man said he'd keep on till he got me. I headed into Texas, pulling a few single-handed jobs on the way. He was still trolling me. So I thought up this scheme of getting someone to help me and posing as the Lone Ranger and his Indian plan. I bet it hampers him in his search. Yeah. You'll have to steer clear lawman now. I expect to continue what we're doing until he won't be able to show himself anywhere. I reckon people won't think so well of the Lone Ranger from now on. Don't go on right, they won't. He and his Indian friend will be lucky if they don't wind up with some part of these bullets in them. Yeah, but we got to watch out too, Tex. You told me once that every outlaw in the territory would like to plug that hombre. Yeah, don't worry. As long as I take the mask off after every job, I'll be safe on that score. <laughs> of course, it put him in the middle. Every owl hoot after him on one side, and now the law after him on the other. Yeah, that's right. Well, where are you heading for? Better find a good place to hide out for a while. I got a sister, Laredo. Runs a cafe there. Her husband's with a bunch caught by the Lone Ranger. Larry's in jail now, and my sister Lottie has no love for the masked man who put him there. She'll hide us for a while? Yep, that's where we're heading. We can make it in a few hours. We get a move on. Come on. Get up, get up, get up. Come on. It was a bright moonlight night, and the Lone Ranger and Toto had continued on the trail until they were in the hills a couple of miles from Rock City. They had turned off the trail and headed toward a suitable campsite back in a grove of trees. When they heard a group of horsemen moving along the trail, they had just left. Oh, oh, oh. Well, this looks like a good place to camp. Yes, we... <laughs> Easy, sir. Seems to be a large row of horsemen riding toward town on the trail we just left, Toto. Ah. We see him now. Yes. They'll see us, too, if we don't get... Must be a sheriff in Kelsey, but I wonder. Into the trees quickly. Into the trees. man and Indian reached the cover of the trees as the bullets began to fly. They headed through the grove and down the other side of the hill with the sound of the pursuing party behind them. They'll begin firing again as soon as they come through the grove, Toto. Swing left. There's a gully there. One big hole. At a fast pace, the two men raced through the gully and down the bank. Very easy, very easy. Then they headed silver and scarf along the bottom of the gully, out of sight of the pursuers. One, two, three. Fight right to the After using various clever methods to cover their trail, the Lone Ranger and Toto finally lost the party and brought their horses to a stop beneath a bluff along the riverbank. The party must have mistaken us for outlaws, Toto. Ah, <laughs> but me not savvy. He hear sheriff yell, hit them. They're a white horse. Uh, that's so. Well, we'll camp for the night nearby, Toto. I'm curious to know whom the party was hunting. Maybe we can find out in the morning. Well, well, it's not safe to go into town. Yes, I know. In the morning, you go up on the bluff and send smoke signals, asking some of your Indian friends around here for news. Ah, me do that. Indians get plenty news. And I always find out why party grab. Well, we fix camp now. We make signals in the morning. <laughs> Daybreak, Toto started a fire and, using a damp blanket, sent smoke signals for quite a while. Answering signals were finally seen, and a little later, an Indian brave rode into the camp and talked to Toto. When he left, Toto told the Lone Ranger what he learned. He was happy, Dad. Indian friends say, posse hunt masked man on white horse. He ride with Indian on paint horse. Anyway, what for? Then hold a bank in Rock City last night. Hold up stage other day. Then kill a prospector week go, steal gold, and wound partner. Oh, others are disguising themselves as us. Ah, uh, and that not good. Not good is right. We'll be handicapped in our hunt for Tex Mears. The law out searching for us. I think I'd like to get my hands on that man. Uh, we'll head toward Laredo, Toto. The marshal there knows of us and will give us a chance to explain if it came to a showdown. We'll have to run up against a strange sheriff and posse around here and get shoot to kill. That's right. One way or another, we'll find those two men. And until we do, we're held by outlaws and land and alike. Let's get away from here, Tonto. Go to a location where we'll have a chance to make plans. Easy, 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 day when Tex and Jake entered the Laredo Cafe and were greeted by Tex's sister, Lottie. Well, Larry, 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 
Oh, I'm so sorry. 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 Oh, I'm so sorry.
not to rise, they saw the stage coach a short distance ahead of them as it entered a wide pass. The wind wind to the stroke. There's a stage to the right ahead of us, Tommy. The car is only a few miles further on. Uh, that's good. Yes. After we go through the pass ahead, we'll look for a place to pitch camp. Then we'll talk over what we can do. Uh, within a short time, the two men moved into the pass. The stage was near the far end. And suddenly, they bridged up ahead and saw a group of men converging on the stage from the large boulders on either side. Here, Tubby. Right, Ross. Hold up the stage. There you go. Let's get going. Oh. At the same time, outside the other end of the pass, Tex masked and posing as the Lone Ranger, with Jake fixed up as an Indian, prepared to go into their act as Lottie's men stopped the stage. Well, that's it, Jake. Now we're too off, Hart. Oh, wait, Tex. Look. Coming from the other end of the pass. Holy mackerel, the Lone Ranger himself. We'll stay back behind these boulders out of sight. Pull your horse to cover quick. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Holy smokes, Tex. What about the other? Yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. We don't dare let the masked man Indian know about it. Look like Jim. It looks like he's on our side, but I don't savvy. We're all on your side. Well, let me come down here. We'll keep them covered. Sure. Come on, Jim. All right. What do you want, Oliver Smith? Here's an extra lariat. Cut it up and tie them hand and foot. Hey, now, wait a minute. There's something wrong here. Cut up, you. I'll tie them, Tonto. Uh-huh. And remove the bandana from the face. Let me do that. Quickly, Tonto helped the driver and the guard tie up the four outlaws. Then Tonto took away the bandanas from their faces. Buck and the others were puzzled and angry. Buck spoke. I thought you have gone too far with this. I told you to shut up. Hey, I recognize every one of them. I've seen them around town with a radar. What are we doing now, mister? Easy, steady, sir. Uh, put them inside the coach. Luckily, you had no problem. In a few minutes, the protesting men were in the coach, and the little ranger turned to the driver, saying, Drive on into the radar and turn them over to the marshal. Tell us put the money box back on the boot so you're all ready. Thanks a lot. But the marshal's going to ask a lot of questions. And when we tell about you... Can... Uh, give him a silver bullet. The marshal understand. Silver bullet, huh? All right, I'll give it to him. Let's go, Jed. Right. Adios. Adios. Jed, get back. Get along. Get. From their hiding place, Tex and Jake had nervously watched as the stage passed and headed for town. They saw the Lone Ranger and Toto turn and go the other way out of the pass. Waiting to be sure they were safe, they finally mounted and rode after the stage at a fast gallop. Meantime, the stage had gone a couple of miles and was approaching a bridge over a creek not far from town. The driver was saying, Man alive, Jed. Imagine the master I'm receiving us from a hold-up, then giving us the gangs and deliver to the marshal. Is he a Toto Rado? Yeah. I'm just beginning to remember where I'd seen those arms. The outlaws of me. Oh, boy, here, boy. Here, here. Look, the masked man named him again. Coming after us like, oh, get out. I better stop. Oh, 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 Hicks, you knocked the driver cold. We didn't say he was a real masked man and he'd just it. Sure. But Lottie's idea almost got us catching. That's it. Now I know. All of you work for Lottie at the cafe. Huh? And what's more, the other masked man wore a belt filled with silver bullets. You're a peak. This hombre knows too much, Tex. Yeah. Come you fellas get the money, box. Right up. Yeah, here, hand it down to me. All right. That's it. Yeah, I got it. All right, man. Lucky your horses are tied to the back of the stagecoach. Our guns are up in the booth. Bring them down, boys. All right, now we'll mount and ride to the left along the shallow creek. Huh? Close along around town behind the cafe. Right. We'll come out of it in that grove of trees just behind Lottie's place. What about that guard, Tex? We done a lot of talk and he knows too much. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now that we're ready to go, I'll settle with him. Oh, wait! <laughs> A 
short time later, the driver revived and drove the stage to town. He told the marshal a strange story of a masked man on a white stallion and an Indian on a paint, who first intercepted the holdup and captured the outlaws, then came back and released them, took the money box and shot the guard. At first, the marshal disbelieved, then was amazed and bewildered when he was given a silver bullet. He shook his head and spoke dazedly. Yeah, the description you gave and the silver bullet tallies with the armory. I thought was a friend of the law. Maybe so, Marshal. But he must have gone local. And remember, he killed Jet after he knocked me out. All right, All right men. We'll form a posse and ride to find him. The Lone Ranger had finally selected a campsite in a grove on one of the hillsides, just a short distance from a creek so as to have fresh water. <laughs> It was a warning penny from the Great Horse Silver which first attracted the Lone Ranger's attention to the sound of many hoofs splashing along in the creek at a distance. What's the matter, Silver? You seem to hear something. Yes, I hear it too, now. But there's some horses coming along in the creek, Toto. Ah. We be ready, Kimasabi. Yes, I tell you who it might be. Huh? Look, horsemen come down Dungeon Creek. Toto, oh, I think that's the marshal leading them. Hey, look, there they are. That's them. I recognize the stage driver, Toto. The marshal must have wanted to see us. No need for a gun. Oh, oh, Why ain't bring so many men? Looks like a posse. Maybe he wants us to help. Don't go for your guns. You all got to cover. That's savage. There's something wrong. Roger, most casually come up. He's just going to be hit. He's a bad. I'll have to shoot. We're not leaving, Marshal. We're puzzled by your actions, Marshal. Didn't you recognize the token I gave to the driver? Yep. So I did, my friend. That silver bullet used to mean a lot to me, but not anymore. I thought you was mighty fine in spite of that mess the first time you come to the stage. But when you come back, you spoiled it all. Hold on, hold on. You said the second time. Yep. You untied them outlaws and took the money box. What's more, you killed Jed, the guard. You stopped us at the bridge that time. No use putting your heads together, mister. You got your dead to rights. Because of the past, I made these men promise not to interfere. To let the law take its course. We're taking you both back. The group had stopped behind the marshal facing the Lone Ranger and Toto. The marshal, holding his gun pointed at the Lone Ranger, had stopped his horse so that the nose of his horse and that of Silver were almost touching. The Lone Ranger sat in the saddle with his hands raised. The slight pressure of his knees was a signal to the intelligent horse Silver to move about restlessly, gradually edging forward. Toto, a little to one side, watched intently, expecting a sudden move. A move that came so quickly that no one knew quite what took place. Silver gave a short leap forward. The Lone Ranger's hand flashed down as if to grab the reins. Instead, it came up with a gun which pushed into the marshal's side, while Silver's tossing head knocked the marshal's gun on. Drop your gun, Marshal. Drop it. Hey, he's got the drop on the marshal. Holy smoke, that was fast. I'll tell your men to drop their guns. No. No, I'm sure you wouldn't shoot me. You were taking me in for murder, remember? Tell him. He'll kill the marshal, boys. Yeah. we better drop us in oh, I won't. I'll give him one for poor Jazz. You may shoot. Please, oh, oh, don't be sorry, but do not try to shoot. Yes, they mean business, men. We're dropping their guns. Yeah, yeah, there they are. Yeah. Yeah. See you later, Marshal. Now, let's go, fellow. Come on, come on. Let's go and get your guns quick. Then we'll follow them. Let's go. A short time later, Lottie and her men with Tex and Jake stood around the desk in her office. The open money box was in front of them, and Lottie was lifting out the paper bills. She was saying... Well, Tex, we didn't expect what happened, but it made things all the better. That mad man will think he's safe around here until his former friend, the marshal, gets the drop on him and throws him into jail. Sure was thinking Hey, Jake, with that Indian disguise still on, you look almost like a real one. <laughs> Put your mask on, Tex, like he was a little crazy, maybe. Huh? All right. Look at that. Uh, you look <laughs> All right. Fool's mask man ought to see it now. <laughs> Get him. Get him quick. I'll fix him. No, you won't. Oh. I told you to worry. Why, you fool? You still fight to run. Why, it's a two. My friend is the winner when a gun. But I'll take a chance. No. Stop, Toto. Anyone else want to try? Rock him, you fool. He hasn't. He's a dummy. The Lone Ranger concentrated on Tex. Toto was fighting like a tiger when help came. The marshal and his men rushed through the door. There's two men. No, they're fighting out there. Stop it. Stop it. We're shooting at the audience. The other 
Miller is stopped and stood surrounded by the posse. But the Lone Ranger and Tex continue to slug it out. I can't stop it, did you hear? All right, Marshal, just as you say. This will end it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. We can't you here. Wait, wait a minute. Huh? Look at the man on the floor. That one holding his shoulder there. Hey, those two were fixed up sort of like you and Tano. Yes. They're the ones who stopped the stage the second time and killed the guard. Hey, Marshal. Now that I see them together, I'm sure he's speaking the truth. I remember now. The second time, the masked man didn't wear a belt full of silver bullets. This one has them. The one on the floor has them. You can't prove which one was the second one. I was the one who helped you. You lie. Now I'm sure hearing you both speak. I couldn't forget his voice. He came first in hell. You were the one who came second. It was your voice I heard that time. Take that mask off. Look, Marshal. That's Tex Mears. Mears? He's wanted all over the territory. He missed out all in the West. Yes, he is. Tex Mears, all right. And these others are the men who rode away with him, taking the money box after killing Jed. The money box is there on the desk. That woman was in with the gang. Buddy, I'm holding you with the head. All right, I'll go. Are we free to go, Marshal? You sure are, with my apologies. I should have known better. You notify all lawmen about this. Good. Adios. That's good. Adios. Adios. You and your ideas, lie. Oh, you're not so smart as yourself, good boy. Take a nap with the go around here, Clayton. Why, you aren't half the man he is, Tex. In spite of how I hate him. Get them all to jail, men. They can argue there. All right. All right. All right. Look, Marshal. Maybe I'm the only one who don't know. But who is that masked man who just left? An hombre I should have known couldn't be crooked. He's the Lone Ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.